Welcome to Blue Star's Bon Appetit, where our goal is to mix in a dash of channel-based education, a sprinkle of vendor solutions, and a hint of collaborative cooking tutorials. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blue Star's Tech Connect Kitchen. I am your host, Dean Reverman, and this is Bon Appetit Tech. Hey, we've got Kayla Robinson around with us today again today. You know Kayla. Perhaps you've seen her by now. She's been on television quite a few times, two times on Guy Fieri's Grocery Games, uh, one-time winner of CHOP just recently on Food Network. I think she knows what she's doing. Well, hey, we've got a great one today. We're going to get into Asian cauliflower chicken sandwich. Yeah. Uh, you heard me right, chicken sandwich, and also an Asian cauliflower steak. Awesome stuff. We're gonna throw in some kimchi, right? We got mm -hmm. some kimchi, we got some edamame, maybe, yep. yep. And we got some quinoa, which I'm not too fond of, but anyway, you're gonna convince <laughs> me of it otherwise. Yes. Hey, if you're looking to get out and about and see the solutions that have been in our uh, ecosystem over the last two years, stop by the Blue Star Tech Connect to You Tour. We're coming to an area near you. Go to bluestarinc.com, click on the events, and see if the tour is coming close to you. Need a little bit more information? Why aren't you listening to the Tech Connect podcast. We got great subject matter experts, great information, education. Log on to whatever podcast you like and listen in for some good stuff. Stick around until the end because we've got the recipes and we've got a $20 gift card so that you can buy the materials to make this wonderful Asian cauliflower. I'm so excited to be making some cauliflower yes. steaks. Let's dive in, Kayla. What do we, right. Where do we need to start with this? So let's start with the cauliflower. And what's great about this is I have both of these entrees on my menu at Arnold's. And oh, this is inside it's scoop, very right? very inside scoop, but it's also very easy and versatile. So we're showing you two different ways to, for a cauliflower steak and different ways to make it. Got okay. It. Okay. Um, so I just peeled off the little stems that they've got. This is great. I'm going to save this for soup stocks and all say, that good you're stuff. You're going to save that for a soup stock somewhere, think, right? I swear. I say it all the time. Okay, so from here, I like to take off a little bit more, but really make sure I keep those florets intact, okay? Ah, so, and this is a basic, this is a cauliflower, right? This is a stock yes. of cauliflower. You're just yep. buying it at the store. Just buy it at the store. Right. Um, and it's honestly very simple. So from here, I'm going to cut right down the center. Okay, and I want to keep all these florets in, intact, so I'm going to do another slice right ah. there. So you want it to be about this thick, okay? I like to take off a little bit more of the stem, and I like to put a little incision right in the center. It mm. helps cook the core because ah. that's the part that takes the longest. So it just kind of helps quicken up Brilliant. the process, okay? Already looks like a steak. I know, it does. It. So I'm Loving taking it. off a little bit of that core and then a little incision right in the center, okay? The florets, these are great. You can use them for little chicken wings if you wanted. And cauliflower soup. Yeah, you know, soup. Just yeah. Raw. Oh, I love them raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it raw. Okay, so we've got uh, the cauliflower steaks. Now we're going to bread them. So I like to do a sesame panko style breading. Oh, I didn't know we were going to bread them. Oh, this yeah. This is cool. And we're going to fry it. Because right? all things yummy are fried. <laughs> okay, so we're going to check our oil. And a little way to do that is you add just a little bit of water in your hand. Boom. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. It popped up at That's us, hot. okay? So this is about, this is on a six out of mm -hmm. 10, so mm -hmm. medium high, okay? And this is just regular cooking oil? What we got yep. going on there? Yep. Vegetable, vegetable oil? Vegetable oil, okay? okay. Got it. Yep. So I've got in here two eggs and about three tablespoons of water. Okay. Just kind of help stretch kinda, it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And then here I've got flour, panko, and sesame seeds, okay? Oh, and, and just, sesame and seeds. And sesame seeds, okay? Mm. So I want to make sure I get this nice and coated. You can kind of press it in there. Okay. You want to get, get into the grooves there get a little in, bit. Yep, a little yep. bit into the mm. grooves around the rim. Okay, so we've got that one. We're going to do the same with the other one. Okay, and this is just raw. We didn't marinate this. Nope. We didn't brine it. Nope. We didn't, right? I've tried different versions of brining and all of that with mm -hmm. this, and I honestly have had just the most luck of just keeping it raw. Okay. Yep, to its true form. Yep. All right, so I'm making sure I and get these edges. And this is a edges. great alternative, right? Because we've been asked a lot mm -hmm. on the show, hey, do something vegetarian. Yes. This is a perfect a great meal for that because it's yes. a meaty way to use a vegetable. Right, and it can be um, pretty versatile. If you get creative, you can make a gluten-free version of it as mm, well. Okay. Yeah, just use yep. gluten-free products okay. and you're good to go. All okay, right. so all we're going to do is we're just going to put this right in there. Now, again, be very careful and lay it away from you. Uh -huh. If you need tongs, you can yes. use tongs as well, Yes. which we're going to bust those out. Right. 
Perfect. All right, so we're looking for a nice golden brown on that. So I would probably like to see a minute and a half to two minutes each side. Per I've side. got the oven at 400 degrees and we're gonna finish it in the oven and that's gonna help cook that core. Cause that core is what takes the longest. The longest. Yep. Cause you don't want to bite into like a really hard core. No, right? yeah, yeah, definitely not. It doesn't taste, I mean, it tastes like cauliflower. So it's not that it tastes bad, but right, the right, texture right, right. is not necessarily the greatest. Especially since the outer is probably going to get a little bit softer. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It's going to get soft. So I'm going to put you in charge oh, of I checking am. for golden brown. Okay? Right. Oh, got it. I'm going to make a sauce. Okay. Okay. Check. All right. So we're going to make this delicious Korean inspired sauce. So okay. This is the Asian this part is the of this Asian part of this. Steak. Okay. So, have you ever heard of Chili Crisp? No. Oh, we know her. We love her. Chili Wait, Crisp is, is the this? best. So, this is a local Cincinnati made um, Chili Crisp made from Sin Soy. Okay. Um, actually, did you know Ohio grows the second to the world's largest amount of soybeans? Get out. Mm hmm. Okay. So, they also make tofu. Um, that's kind of their specialty is tofu and miso. Um, but they make this chili crisp, which is really delicious. It's super spicy, but it's also very savory. But to cut down on that spice, we're going to add some honey. And we're going to add some rice wine vinegar. As you're Oop. doing that, I'm going to show you the bottom here. Oh, what are we looking? Keep it down. Keep it down. Yeah, we want, we got we a, want a little to go. more. Yep. Okay, got it. So we got the vinegar and some soy sauce. I'm already loving this sauce. Yeah. I can tell you. It's yummy. It's my favorite. Oh, so you did. You threw additional soy sauce I in I did put okay. some soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're just going to mix it up. Yummy. All right. So that's basically our sauce. Now I'm going to check to see if it needs salt and pepper. Sometimes it does, sometimes That's it doesn't. Straight yeah, pretty straightforward. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> yes, so good, good to go. <laughs> you don't need soy sauce because of the I'm sorry, you don't need salt because of the soy sauce. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's that's got saltiness, yep. right? That's this where you're getting that. This is pretty spicy. So I'm actually going to add a little more honey just cuz I like spice but not Everybody Not everybody spice. does. Yep. Yep. So you mm -hmm. can cut down on whatever is spicy. You can cut that down. See, that's the way it is in our household. My love, my wife loves spicy. Me, a little bit Not more so much. Yeah. So that's all right. we'll do this for me, and then she'll take it up a notch. You there know, you with go. Her stuff. Yeah. I think your wife and I would cook along or get along I just great. So. We'll cook yeah. together someday. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So then the other sauce I'm going to make is an aioli to go with the sandwich because we're going to do the sandwich first. Okay. How's it look under there? Yep. Let me show you the other one. Oh, Still got almost, a little bit to go. Almost. Yeah. Let's crank it up just a little right. bit. Yeah. I want some nice golden brown on gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. So, so aioli sauce. Aioli. Yep. You've already intimidated me. I mean, is this hard to make? No. Mayo. And I'm going to add chili crisp again. That's <laughs> it? It's that simple. Oh, okay. But you can change this up. So, um, you can add a kimchi aioli. That would be delicious because hmm. we're going to put kimchi in here. So you okay. can use the juice from the kimchi and add that, and you've got a kimchi aioli, okay? okay. That's pretty great. Um, I just love this chili crisp so much, and I try and find an excuse to use it in everything <laughs> I cook with. So this is what's bringing the spice? This sauce is definitely bringing the spice. This has more spice to it. This okay. is a spicy Asian chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we got a lot of spice forward you got on some this. some flavor, right? Lots of flavor. All right. This one I know I do want to add some salt and pepper to. Just a little. Not too much. And I am going to add a little bit of this rice wine vinegar to this. Uh -huh. Just to add some acidity. I was wondering, right? Because we've done lemon. Could You You don't want to do a lemon here, though, you right? Could. Yeah, you could? Yeah. You could okay. add lemon if you've got acidity. Um, I have lime. Okay. But I'm going to actually finish the whole thing with lime. But you could use lime as well. Okay. Yep. All right, so we always got to make sure we give it a taste. Mm, delicious, sweet, and spicy. You got that fat mayo in there that mm -hmm. kind of cuts down on the spice as well, mm -hmm. which is why an aioli is so great to have with these sandwiches. If it's too spicy, it's going to cut down cut on that down. spice, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's going to be great. So you'd be, you'd have me ordering a little bit more aioli. Yeah, Can I have a little there? bit more of that on the side, yeah. please? Hey, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That How looks great. Looking? Go yeah. ahead and turn it. Flip. Yep, flip. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Nice. Looking good so far. Texture on there. Mm. Yes, I love that. So as Just that's, the smell alone. Anything fried, though. It's Oh, anything fried is delicious. All right, so what we got here? I'm just cutting the bread. So this is just an Italian loaf. Um, I like to use baguettes at the restaurant, um, but this one's a little softer. Uh, the baguettes I have 
are super soft. They're so delicious, but I ran out of them at the restaurant, so I did not bring them here. Gotcha. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get this ready. Not a hard bread. The this sandwich. is kind of like a yep, yep. just a mm -hmm. soft bread. But you can honestly use whatever bread you like. If you like buns, you can use buns. You know. Um, but what I will say is to kind of core out a little bit of this because we got a lot that's going to go on here. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to core or hollow, we'll call it out, a little bit of the. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that trick. Yeah, and you know it's so healthier, you're right? You, yeah, well, that's a good. That's <laughs> you're a really saving good point. calories. But, it's, but in all seriousness, if you're making a sandwich that's going to have a lot of stuff on it, mm -hmm. there's a good tip. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely hollow out your bread, hollow and we're going to toast these as well as toasting um, those in the oven. So we got the oven at 400. How's that other side looking? Mm -hmm. We're looking a little decent. Uh, almost, yeah. almost. Yep, we're getting yep. there. Okay, for sure. Perfect. I don't want to ruin that top there. It's looking pretty good. I know, good. it's so beautiful. So I'm going to start getting the rest of my toppings ready. I'm going to do, this is called a bias cut, where you're okay. cut at an angle, okay? Mm -hmm. So just a nice angle. All it does, doesn't change the taste, it's just presentation that makes it look really pretty. See? Is that, what are we cutting up there? This is a jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I thought. Okay. So like compared to like this cut right here, <laughs> That's yeah. me. Yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. Very cool. Chef? Dean. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. But hey, it all tastes the same. Right. But again, it's just a little way to elevate yeah, your yeah, dish, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I love about these little tricks that you can do to just kind of step your dish up just mm -hmm. a little bit more, mm -hmm. which is really nice. All right, so I'm going to get my lime ready. Okay, and am I going on the pan with You're this? You're going to go and straight then we're going on the straight pan. On the yep, oven? yep. Okay. you can probably already do that. Yep. Okay. And now when you do that, just shake off a little of that excess. Mm. There you there go. go, yep. Perfect. I love yeah. it. Yep. Looking good so I'll put far. These on there too. I haven't gotten fired yet. I'm still <laughs> doing okay. All right. We're gonna pop this in the oven. We're gonna take a quick break, uh, right? And yep. so that we can come back and kind of finish that up. Make the finish the sandwich yep. up. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this. You know, food's an important thing here at Bon Appetit, but drinks, just as important as well. And we're mixing it up a little bit here with Intel. We got Rob Rizny from Intel. He's gonna make something wonderful for us to share along, you know, when you're having a great meal. Rob, what are you, what are you doing here? Dean, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to, to just jump in and share one of my favorite cocktails. Uh, that I love to make. In fact, it's my wife's uh, one of my wife's favorites. Yes. Um, I think she loves it because it's just got beautiful color, but it's also got that tropical flavor, which mm. on a nice spring day, yes, um, really, really reminds you that summer's on the way. Love it, love um, it, love it. What's it called? What are we, so what are we doing? We're making a French martini. Nice. Um, and you know, French martinis are really good. They're pineapple juice, chambord, which is a raspberry mm -hmm. liqueur, and of course vodka. You've got to have some of that. We're gonna mix it up with some wine, shake it, and I'll uh, I'll let you let you taste it out. Let's go! Yes, love nice, it. Nice, simple drink, really. It starts off with just a, a, a simple, uh, you know, one to one to two ratio with lime juice. So let's get some wine. And we in like here. the real stuff, right? We're yeah, not using tell you this what, kind of bottle. No, you can't. Stuff. Whenever you're mixing a cocktail, one of the keys is fresh limes. Yes. You know, you really can't have enough if you don't have a bag of fresh limes before you start the weekend. You're gonna <laughs> run out. So we start off here, we've got a nice single shot glass of lime juice, we'll toss that in our shaker, put it over some ice because we really want to get that frothy kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. One ounce of this raspberry chambord, take a smell of that. Ooh. Right? Yes. So it's got the... So I don't think I've ever had that before. Yeah. So, so this is a yes. staple you should really keep in your... In the bar. In your bar. Yeah. Because when you mix this with a lot of different things, cranberry martinis, mm -hmm. a lot of different options. So again, one lime, one chambord. Now we're gonna go after two pineapple juice. And here's the tropical, right? Well, here's the tropical. Here's the, here's the, here's the tropical. Yeah. yeah. This adds in that fruit kind of flavor. And then of course I always go to the standby some vodka. Yep. I prefer French vodka. Yep. So we'll add but a in this case those. we'll go with the, the Kirkland's. Hey, absolutely. You might as well <laughs> use stuff. you might as well take the, the stuff that doesn't have the brand name in this case. Oh, we're going double shot there. Oh right? yeah, well it's two shots of vodka, two pineapple, uh, two one shamboard, one lime. Okay, so let's shake this up. Okay, so we get this shaken up. Now watch when this color pours out. All right. Oh, you are right, my friend. Look at that. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. So you get that nice pineapple frost on it. Very nice. Take a sip of that. Very nice. Man, if I only had a little, you know, garnish or something like that. Well, there you go. Mm, mm, mm. Amazing, huh? I'm, I'm in the tropics. Right, so you know what I, what I love about this one again, because that pineapple just really yeah. pops. Yeah. And this has been hard to make in the last uh, last few months because of all the supply chain challenges. Right, yes, you know, exactly. My, we were having a lot of trouble finding pineapple juice until just about uh, six or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's one of the things at Intel that we're really you know, conscious of is supply chain challenges, yeah. obviously people concerned about chip shortages. Yep. But our clients are constantly asking us, what are the new ways that we can apply technologies mm -hmm. to, uh, to to make sure I've got the pineapple juice on the shelves? Mm -hmm. If you're a retailer or you're a, you know, a close a close uh, organization or a restaurant trying to make sure you've got the right ingredients, mm -hmm. what we're seeing is that the organizations that are adopting AI applications mm -hmm. uh, from partners like Sienna Analytics, one mm -hmm. of our Edge AI enabled uh, ISVs, mm -hmm. um, they're able to do things uh, to apply the data that exists in ERP with other types of new data that have never really been able to be captured before. Mm -hmm. So that you can do a much better job of figuring out the right product at the right time and importantly, make sure you've got backups to your, in your supply chain uh, when, when risks happen. Because if you don't have your pineapple juice, you, you can't don't make get a this. French martini. That's right, that's right. So Intel helping us out in many, many ways. That's very exactly. good. Rob, thanks so much for stopping by Absolutely. today. A little mixing it up with uh, Intel today. Welcome back everybody to Bone Appetite. We are here with Kayla Robison. We are getting into an Asian cauliflower steak that smells so wonderful right now. But we're gonna start with the sandwich first. Yes. We'll go sandwich first. Sandwich first. So we have this in the oven, 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. You're gonna pop that out. Mm, 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 mm. So we're gonna save one steak for the entree and the other steak's gonna be for our sandwich. Gotcha. All right, so for the sandwich, we're gonna put the aioli on the top bun. And again, this was the, you, you kicked a little spice in there, I did. right? did, yep. I used the chili crisp. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so making sure we cover every single surface of that. By the way, that is one of the things I learned from you that I have taken covering the whole mm -hmm. bun, right? Yep. Get that delicious stuff all the way out to the edge. All right, so then we have that, and we're gonna drizzle some of this delicious sauce right on top. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's mm. just, it's mm. meaty. It looks, it looks wonderful already. It is wonderful. All right, I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lime juice on there. And then I like to, let's put a good amount of cilantro, the jalapenos, and my favorite part, kimchi. <laughs> Love the now, kimchi. Now, what kind of flavor is this adding to the whole thing? So kimchi adds, um, it's a pick, so kimchi's pickled. Pickled. Yep, mm -hmm. pickled yep. cabbage um, in a lot of spices. It's delicious, it's spicy, it's got a little sweetness to it, um, but it's just so good. So it's like a sweetie, zingy kind yes. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you like kimchi? I sure. <laughs> I don't think I eat a lot of kimchi. Do you want to try it? Hey, of course I do. <laughs> yeah, if it's pickled, I'll eat it. All I'll right. eat anything pickled for sure. There. It is yeah. a little yeah. spicy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you might like it. No, I'm good it's with good. that. Yeah, mm. it's delicious. And boom. Oh, man, that's got a tang to oh, it, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. That is the fried cauliflower Asian chicken sandwich. Now, would we even cut that or you don't need to? That no. is such a big, you know, right? Oh, it's just delicious <laughs> and beautiful. I'm gonna add some more spice in there. Yeah, I love it. I love, I mean, I really like cilantro, so I love when it's like sticking out the sides, almost like falling out. Think of like a banh mi almost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, the pickled um, kimchi, I mean, kimchi is pickled, but that adds just this different layer of flavor. That's mm -hmm. so delicious. And the fresh jalapenos add that freshness to there. And then you've got a good texture from it being crusted in this panko and sesame seeds and stuff so like that. So you got a nice little crispiness there. Mm -hmm. And we toasted up the bun a little bit. Yes, right? we did. We Always toast baguette. the bun. Yep. And then that's how we serve it at the restaurant. Boom. And I can't keep that thing in stock. There it you is go. just flying off the menu. <laughs> but the best thing about this is that we can also do an entree version of it yep. that's even healthier. Ah, yeah. but you have to wait until after this commercial break. We got the sandwich. Now we're going to show you the entree version. Very nice. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> hey friends, how are we doing? Hey, while we've got a little break in the action here, I thought uh, maybe I'd come by and collect your payment. Huh, payment? Who payment for what? Show? I mean, our chefs, they don't work for free or anything, you know? And, I mean, you're sitting here getting cooking tips and sampling the product. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay for this stuff. Okay, well, I don't have my wallet, just my, I just have my phone. Yeah, and I, I just have my credit card. Well, hey, guess what? That's not a problem. Because I have the new Hilo M60 Pay. So this is a, a cool little mobile computer that has a lot of flexibility for payment options. So for your phone, for instance, you can take NFC payments. Uh, for your card, you can do NFC also, or use the EMV chip. Dip, tap, swipe, it's got all those payment options. No cash needed. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Sounds like a standout device. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. It's got the uh, you know uh, Android 10. Rugged six inch touchscreen display, a whole Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. I'm not really sure what that means, but I think it means it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a good day to day device. Good for a line busting, curbside pickup, pretty much anything you might need in day to day retail hospitality work. So it's good stuff. Nice, nice little device here. But, but seriously, you guys, gotta, you guys gotta pay up. So. Okay, well, don't expect a tip. Really? Really? Hey, John, uh, you here for some of the food or what, what's going well, on, man? Of course, I'm always here for the food, but I figured I'd take some time to work on some of our ads while I was at it, too. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. So which one are you working on here? Well, get this. I got a great line for you here. So right now, when it comes to fast, reliable point-of-sale receipt printers, merchants are feeling the need, the need for speed. I stole it from that old Top Gun movie. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll ignore the shot at my age. It's then. old, Dean. 1986. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so what it's, you're saying, hospitality, retail, those types of folks don't like to wait around for the receipts? Well, no, I mean, especially like if you're printing out those giant, like three foot long receipts that everybody hates, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got like QR codes, coupons, ads, I don't know, coloring sheet for the kids or something like that. <laughs> no one wants to wait around for that stuff. So Epson has them covered with their newest printer, the OmniLink TM-T887. All right, so, but how fast is this bad boy? 500 millimeters per second, fastest in the industry and a high speed auto cutter to boot. Very nice. I know Epson's more than about just speed. What else does this thing got? Well, yeah, I mean, so it's got a long print head and auto cutter life. It's mm -hmm. backed up by like a four year limited warranty, but it's also one of those cool little printers where it can kind of be the centerpiece for an entire point of sale oh. setup. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, you know, flexibility, cloud server print as well, but it's got a built-in USB and ethernet, but also has options for like power and USB, parallel, wireless, pretty much everything you need for a flexible setup, future-proof online ordering too, which, you know, everybody loves that these days. Everybody's got that. You got all right. that in that script right there? I did. I think I think this will make a good ad. So if somebody wants more information, what like, do they need to do? Well, I mean, they talk to their Blue Star Epson representative. That's right. If you want more information, contact your Blue Star representative and they can help you out. Have we been doing an ad the whole time? Yeah, this whole time. Yeah. Huh. Well, all right. Hey, I got to get back. See ya. Yeah. Enterprise devices alone can only do so much. Without the proper unified platform, employees may feel left in the dark or unable to communicate in real time. With Zebra's Workforce Connect, hindered workers are brought into the loop, transformed into effective problem solvers. With services such as text messaging, push to talk, and the ability to enable a Zebra mobile computer to also function as a mobile desk phone, workers can perform all tasks on just one device fully enabling the integration of voice and data workflows. To learn more about Zebra Workforce Connect, be sure to call your Blue Star representative today. Welcome back everybody to Bone Appetech. We are talking Asian cauliflower steaks. We have the sandwich that Kayla was so nice to make. Now we're gonna take it up to an entree, right? Yeah. So how do we do that with all this so wonderful stuff? So we're gonna use basically the same uh, ingredients. Same steps. Yep, yep. same steps. Um, but this time we've got this edamame quinoa. Ah. Yeah, so it's quinoa is super simple. It's a two to one ratio. So you do two parts water, one part quinoa. Okay. Okay. And then you boil it until the water is about evaporated and then you cover it. Mm. and let it steam and do the rest. Okay. Okay, so about 25, 30 minutes is the process for that. Okay? Gotcha. So, so, yeah, so you have to prep a little bit for this one, right? You do have to right? prep just a little bit. It's but not it's, like you're going to throw it in. But you throw it all mm -hmm. in a pot, you let it do its thing, you walk away. Could you do microwave? You could do a microwave, okay. absolutely. Right. Yep, Yep. you could do it in the microwave about 20, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how big of a quantity you're doing. 
All right, so all I added in here was soy sauce, some grated ginger, a little bit of garlic, mm. and some edamame. I was wondering if you were gonna pull ginger out. Yes. Yes. Love ginger, fresh ginger, so delicious, yep. yes. All right, so I always tell folks to eat with your eyes first, so making sure you kind of tuck these little guys in there, <laughs> those ones that fill, good. yep. I want a nice pile. Now, a little trick that the restaurants use and that I use at my restaurant is using a big ice cream scoop. Ah, yep. right? I scoop it. And I put it right on there, yes. and it's got this beautiful mound. It's the right serving of size. Yep. yep. So then we're gonna use our cauliflower steak. I'm gonna go for this side. Bam. Okay. Just so put, put that guy right on top. Right on huh? top. Okay. So then we're gonna start. Look at how beautiful that is already. I know, Are you it's kidding delicious. me? Delicious. So I'm gonna put a little salt on here. You don't need a lot, but since it was fried, I'm gonna put a little salt. And that's kosher. Mm -hmm. That's not your just your table salt. No, there. it's not. It's definitely kosher. Some fresh lime juice as well. Mm. You're going to use that chili crisp sauce. Again, if you want it less spicy, you would just put less or more honey, less spice, okay? And then, some kimchi. So pretty straightforward, kimchi. It's Again. very straightforward, it's very simple. It's got a lot of nutrients in here. All right, I'm gonna clean up my rim of my table, or my table, my rim of my plate, because again, the eat with the eyes first rule. And then I'm gonna top it with some Fresh cilantro, right on top as a little garnish. I'll be darned. Yep, and that's it. That is, that is you seriously, can, that's a beautiful dish right there. So beautiful, you can put some sesame seeds on there for a little more. Some black sesame seeds would be really nice on here. But that is it. It is simple, it is delicious. Again, you can make this gluten-free, just substitute some gluten-free products on there, and you've got yourself a good plant-based menu. Boom, and that's exactly what we needed. A nice vegetarian meal yeah. here, right? Mm -hmm. Everything here is... Yep. Now the one thing, so honey, way, some, some, folks, this, by the way. some folks will eat honey if yeah. they're vegetarian, some don't. But you can substitute. If you don't want honey, you can use maple syrup, maple syrup, you can use uh, guava. That's a really great one. Mm -hmm. um, That's a little yeah. kimchi on there yes. as well. Yes. It's yummy. It's a little spicy. Oh man. Yep. Ooh, the breading. Mm-hmm. That crunch in there. Yes, that it's crunch so is awesome. Yes, it's Ooh. really good. Folks, seriously, this is one of the better recipes I think we've done here. Thank oh, you good. very much. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, there you have it. Yeah, hey, super we, simple. Very good. We want to say thanks again to Elo, Epson, Newcastle, Samsung, and Zebra for helping us and being the sponsors. Now is your chance, by the way, to get the recipe for this. You can't have this one, this one's mine. But if you <laughs> want the recipe, go to bluestarinc.com slash cooking and put in, hmm, what code should we put in here? Um, kimchi? Or is that too hard to spell? No. Cauliflower? Cauliflower is even <laughs> <laughs> Cauliflower. If you can smell cauliflower, put it in there. We won't hold you to the spelling. Uh, we will send you the recipes, and you'll also get a $20 gift card easily buy the materials for this meal. Kayla, thank you so thank much. You. We much appreciate it. This is awesome. I'm going to eat the rest while you, well, we'll see you next time. <laughs>